I don't think it's necessarily an achievement. I think I'm most proud of our people. Um, I'm most proud of our soldiers. I'm uh, most proud of our families and uh, the strength, the resilience that, uh, that they demonstrate on a daily basis uh, and their commitment to serve and to serve this nation. That's, that's what makes me the most proud. And if you ever get to spend some time around our soldiers or around our families, uh, you'll understand that pretty quickly. First, I think I'd like the American people to know we're still a nation at war, and, and we are really a military at war. With only 1% of the population that actually serves in uniform, we are still very much in combat in different theaters, uh, Afghanistan, Syria, Iraq. And this, this, we are a, uh, this command is, is a gigantic part of that, is a big part of that. With about 3,000 soldiers deployed on any given day, to about 80 different countries. And we're a dynamic force with uh, the United States Army Green Berets, with our civil affairs, as well as our psychological operations forces. And that, uh, I'd like them to know that, that uh, we're still a nation that is at war. We are a nation that is, we are a f command that is very engaged in the foreign theaters and in our combat theaters and in our zones of conflict, where we're not yet in, uh, in, in combat and we hope to not be in combat but our partners are certainly feeling uh, the competition and, and the different aspects of conflict in those parts of the world. You know, the, the future's bright. Um, we have dynamic young leaders um, and they demand excellence. Uh, they demand excellence early and, and they're smart. They are smart, uh, they're smart folks, and they, they do a great job. So first of all, the, the future's bright just because of the quality of the people that we attract and the strength of those people and the strength of their families that support them as they continue on. Where we really want to be is, is we want to be forward positioned where we are at competition with whether it's the great powers uh, and, and our, our peer adversaries or whether it is where there are growing insurgencies or, or, or violent extremist organizations. We want to be forward where we're in competition before it turns into conflict. And then tr be able to transition and support the joint force, support the larger army, if it goes into a larger, uh, larger type of combat operation. But we want to be forward. We want to be ahead of, the, ahead of the guns so that we can try to avoid that and to help our partners and other militaries around the world take care of their own problems. I, I think once again it goes back to people. And one of the things that I'm very vested in is, you know, who we are is really truly important. What we do is important and we do a lot of neat things, but who are we? Who do we proclaim to be as special operations forces? And so if, if we say, you know, within the Special Forces Regiment, we're quiet professionals. Well, the emphasis on that is profession. What does it mean to be a professional? What does it mean to truly own and have ownership a part of the force that you're in and be able to provide guidance and direction all the way up and down the chain of command? And that, that's important. That's, you know, being, being a quiet professional, professional. And, you know, secondly, you've got to be a warrior. Um, we have to have warriors. Um, that's a, that is a mindset that is absolutely non-negotiable. You, you have to be willing and committed to the cause and, and have a warrior spirit. Then if you want to be within our framework, uh, you also have to be a master of unconventional partnered operations. You have to say, how do I work with a partner force? How do I work with a different set of folks? whether it happens to be uh, the, the folks that we work with in Afghanistan or whether it happens to be partner forces that we work with in Europe or in South America. How do you get the best out of that relationship and, 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 and through combined operations make a difference? And then you have to be an adaptable problem solver. You've really got to look at how do I solve this problem without necessarily a, 
a kinetic response. How do I tamp down a problem? How do I provide advice up at the highest levels? And how do you be an adaptable problem solver? And so if, if what I think makes us unique is it's a profession that we take very seriously that we have ownership of. We're united by being warriors, by being masters of partnered operations, and being adaptable problem solvers. And then, you know, within, within the Special Forces Regiment, you can look at all of our crests, and there's a noble purpose there. And that noble purpose is the oppressed over the bear, liberate the oppressed. And that helps us keep ourselves very rooted. And I think those qualities would find, their, would find root all the way, if I went all the way back to, to General Donovan and the OSS, the Office of Strategic Services, or I went to Aaron Bank, who founded the Special Forces and the 10th Special Forces Group, through our warriors in Vietnam, the Cold Warriors, and the guys in the War on Terrorism. Those qualities, I think, are what, are what we really espouse and want to be.